Yeah, I guess everybody just welcome to the end of the world podcast, right? Uh, with what you've been hearing out there in the industry, if you're on TikTok, Instagram or anything, you see a lot of people panicking. So I thought I should start this meeting with it's the end of the world by REM. But the next line and it's the end of the world as we know it is I feel fine. And I know a lot of you guys who are within our group already feel just fine about what's going on. But there are a lot of agents out there in the industry who are not feeling fine, right? Chris Hardy and I were talking about it this morning and we're like, well, why do you think so many agents are panicking right now? And it's because realistically, man, real estate agents, they make so much money and they make so much money that they're allowed to be complacent with their value, right? With the way that they work with their clients, with how they're able to, uh, with the skill sets, um, that they need, they, they they brush a lot of that to the side because it's easy to close a deal and make money, right? And what I was telling Chris this morning, I'm like, Chris, you know why so many agents are panicking? Because it's the market catching up to your complacency, right? And that makes you fearful, right? So we have two responses that we can, we can have uh, at a time like this. One is to just go, you know what? I probably didn't belong in the business in the first place. Or number two, it's like, holy shit, I got a rebound. I've got to have a skill set. I've got to have some value. And the great thing is, guys, I'm glad you're all here today because that's one of the, the things that we focus on the most, right? Is value and skill set and helping agents articulate that value and go out there and control their own destiny, control their own business. And Chris and I used to laugh and joke over the past couple of months about how, man, because we focus so hard on like the 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 sales skills, the skill set and the value, we've probably got one of the most underrated assets there is in the real estate business. You know what I mean? It's not a sexy sell, the skill set, the value. The sexy sell is, hey, do 100 deals in years uh, a year in real estate and don't do anything, right? Which is completely anti what we do. You know what I mean? And so, boy, when they made this NAR announcement, if you guys were paying attention to the stock market, Chris Hardy's value went up, right? Zillow's stock went down. The co-founders, ProAgent, and, uh, and, and everybody who's part of our organization, our stock is on the rise. And so if anybody on this call is feeling even a little bit insecure about what's going on, I want you to know that today, even if you're not a part of this group, that we got your back and we're going to give you some tools and resources that you need to level up your skill set, to level up your value so that you don't skip a beat. But the one thing that I would ask all of you guys today is, number one, if you're worried about it, don't sit on this meeting and multitask. Plug in because you need it. If you're feeling insecure at all, right? Make sure, guys, that at the end of this meeting, you take the things that we're giving you today and you implement them, right? Now more than ever, and if you found yourself being complacent about the implementation of tools and ideas in the past, and you are at all insecure about your future in the industry, right? Or you're panicking about buyers or, or what that's going to look like on the listing side, Trust me when I tell you, focus on implementing today because it's the agents who've got the skill set, the value, who can articulate it, that are going to have a, a real future in this industry, right? And you can make the decision now, do I leverage this moment in time as an opportunity to really go out there and play Pac-Man in my market? Because most agents don't have this support. Most agents are going to take a year or two to try to figure this shit out and, 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 uh, and, and compensate for what's going on in the marketplace. You have an opportunity right now, if you learn and implement, to take it full advantage of this market while every other agent's trying to figure it out. So we brought Chris Hardy, Texas real estate GOAT in here today. Um, he's a broker owner, um, has a large listing-based brokerage where his value proposition is really teaching his agents to have the autonomy to go out there and create business when they want business. Obviously, we've got Michelle Wilson here who built the largest listing brokerage in Washington State for 14 consecutive years, guys. And that stuff doesn't happen by accident. So I want to welcome all of you guys today. Thank you so much for joining. And we'll get right into it. Michelle Wilson. Thank you, Kula. And Kula, will you say that again? The market is catching up with your complacency. Am I saying that the right? Market, the market has caught up to your complacency. Yes. Man, that's so, that's And so the more fear bad. you have, the more fear you have, the more you know that's real for you. The more fear yeah. you have. Because a lot of people are, they're either posting or they're in the comments on the sidelines, baby. They're on the sidelines and the real go-getters are putting in the work. It's not going to be about, you know, sex sales. It's going to be work sales. Work, work is going to get the sales, right? So we're going to talk about that today. Right. 
I posted uh, yesterday, you know, I said that it's an option to be uninformed and untrained. Um, and that's what we're here for today. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff with you guys. We're going to cram it into uh, this hour. Uh, we'll let you guys ask questions. I'm going to I guess even, you know, let's get you guys engaged in the chat. There's a lot of information. So kind of everyone, we're, here's what's interesting, right, is I'm not going to say we're all at the same place because there's those that have already been trained for what's going to give you the separation, right, and what's going on with the market now. But this whole change that's going on uh, and, and what we'll kind of talk about to give you guys some highlights on, everyone's in the same position, right? And so how many of you guys put, a, you know, put your hand up maybe in the chat have already been on different trainings. I know a bunch of us were on a big one yesterday with 47,000 agents, uh, just getting the information, right, of what does this actually mean? What's going on? Give me give me some hands in the, the, the chat section there. If anyone missed, so most everyone at this point hopefully is putting out content for the real estate companies, the industry, your coaching companies you're with, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if anyone missed uh, anything that they want to have something to, I just want to, I'll drop this into the chat. Anyone that this was great information still from yesterday. Let me plop it in here. That's just the full recording. Those of you guys with co-founders, there's an entire transcription of all the notes and the recording, just kind of laying out the, the basics because we want to focus on taking action, right? We want to focus on what it takes, the skill set, uh, skilling up and what you guys exactly should be doing. So we're going to walk through that with you guys today, but jump in anyone that wants to be able to uh, still gather uh, the information. They talk about more of the tacticals of like compliance wise. What does that mean? What are we able to do? And you have to remember, okay, that this is still an open thing. It's evolving. So we'll talk about what we can do, what we can control, what we're focusing on. This is still evolving. It's going to change. It will. It, it, it can change to whatever it becomes. Um, and so there's good information in there. They talk about some of those tacticals. How do we write things into contracts, things like that. So I'll leave that for you guys. Um, Chris, what do you want? So when we talk about, and I love how Cooley said this, right? It's, we think about what's, you know, when you have change, right? And this is what I wanted to say to people, because People don't like change, right? Right, Chris? People don't like change. No, they don't like change. Change is inevitable, right? Change has always happened in our market. Change has happened in all of our, you know, changes happened. Uh, I think it was Jody and I talking about this morning, right? Changes happened in the mortgage industry. Changes happened in the title and escrow industry. Change happens, right? And with change, uh, you're going to see uh, who's resilient who thrives, you're going to see all those different pivots uh, and you're going to see that separation change even more. So we talk about this all the time of a skilled, trained professional agent and everyone else. There's already a separation gap, right? That will always exist. When you go through bigger changes like that, what happens is that gap just widens even more, right? And so when we look at um, uh, some of the, I look at this as the positive. It was so interesting. And anyone that saw Cooley's post yesterday we're on this training getting, you know, we're all just kind of getting informed of what's going on uh, across the industry. There's 47,000 agents on that training call, right, Chris Cooley? Yep. And what was going on in those comment section? Panic. Panic at the Freaking disco. Out. It was, it was hilarious almost. And Negative uh, Nelly. part of it, part of it was hilarious guys. And part of it was like, oh my God. Like there's a lot of people panicking unnecessarily, you know what I mean? And so um, when I see that panic happening, I think what a massive need that there is in the real estate industry. And this is like the glaring weakness. And we wonder why, um, you know, you wonder why so many agents feel insecure about their value. And it's typically because they've been able to get away over the past four or five years without having to know their value, without having to articulate it and without having to solve problems. It's more been like an order taker. So complete meltdown, I think, Michelle, in the comment section. Yeah. And it's one of the things I talk about. I was talking to a great agent, you know, even yesterday and they were frustrated, right? They're like, I'm frustrated that that's the result. I'm why, why didn't, why couldn't this happen? You know, they want to argue and you're frustrated. All that is, is a distraction. If you guys think about that, the majority of people are just allowing that as a distraction in their business and their life versus you focus on what you can control. The business is still moving forward, right? Buyers agents aren't going away. Business isn't going away. The demand for the market isn't going away, right? So there's those that are working and staying focused and we're leveling up our skills. And then there's the panic and the, it's not even just the panic or fear. For some, it's more, you're just allowing, does that make sense? You're allowing the frustration to get you. All of that's just a distraction. Yeah. All of it. Well, let's think right. about it like this real quick too, uh, Michelle, not to cut, not to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the last six months, 12 months, 
any real estate agent who's a, who's a part of this, uh, you know, mastermind, we go into these real estate groups, lab code agents, real estate this, real estate that, and it's every day people showcasing that they're having problems in terms of how to find business. They're looking for resources that are going to give them referrals, do the work for them, do all these things. People have been in panic mode. In Houston, here where the pro agent headquarters is, you know, two years ago, there was 14, 15, 16,000 homes selling in a month. Now it's 8,000. So the amount of sales that have been going on has been reducing, um, you know, since the market was just do going so great. And yeah, there's agents that are doing just fine, but the majority of agents are hurting. And then you throw this gas on that fire and now they do not know what to do. And they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off. And it makes more sense for them to sit there and complain be in fear, and they've actually normalized this kind of fear in their life because they're constantly trying to find the next deal without knowing where they're going to get it from, and this just enhances this entire process for them, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'll say, I look at this before we dive in deep here, right? Like, how do we look at all this as a positive, right? Number one, this change has happened at the same exact moment across the board for everybody, right? Like, this is happening unanimously. We are going to, it's another change in our industry. We're going to shift and and, and pivot and uh, uh, build on top of that. And like I talked about, this is going to separate those that can go out there and, and be the professional, right? It's no different than our business. You hear everywhere, right? Everyone's like, you need to have stronger value, right? You need to be able to demonstrate your value. You need to be able to have a good presentation. Hasn't that always been the case? Think about this. That has always been the case. There's agents on here with us right now that sell 50, 70, 100 homes a year, even all on the buy side. They have a professional system and process and presentation and buyer's agency uh, uh, process and system that they run with their clients. The only difference, um, like Cooley, you mentioned at the beginning there, is we could have gotten away with it because we didn't have to, right? But business has been done this way forever, right? It separates, <laughs> separates the professionals, right, from everyone else. And so I look at it as what a great opportunity, the positive to this. This is going to take everyone to go out there and get creative and force you to level up your value, your presentations, your, your value propositions, your service to your clients. It's just going to bring more value and professionalism to the industry. If you think about it, because no matter who you are, whatever level you're doing your business, you are right now going to go revamp everything you're doing. Right. And right. Uh, uh, change just also is going to create opportunity. So some are going to use this, Chris, like you were talking about, instead of going like, they were already complaining about all the same things. Where do I get business? Where's the next deal coming from? It's all a scarcity mindset. And they don't know how to go out and create it. That's going to be the biggest leg up that we uh, talk with you guys all right now of as we shift into what we're doing in the marketplace. Um, but it's, don't let those distractions get in the way, right? This is where we become better at what we do right? We practice and get better at our skills, right? And we put in more work. That's what this becomes. Okay. So I want a thousand percent real quick, Michelle, we had a couple of different options when we talked about putting the, together this meeting and it was number one, um, like th does the industry need right now a, a more motivation, right? Or some inspiration or like a mindset check absolutely right and what we see a lot on these meetings are are people who are just like everything's going to be okay everything's going to be all right or the sky is falling or they're saying vague things like you know your value has to go up kind of like what we're talking about at the beginning of this call right and so when michelle and, and chris and i got together we're like i think these people need more than just inspiration in a pep talk right and are you you guys on the same page with me, everybody on this call? Hell if I yeah. could just get you to unmute your microphones real quick and yeah, just yeah, say, please, yeah. give me something tangible. Hell yeah. yeah. Can you guys just say, yeah. give me something oh, tangible. Oh, That's what I'm talking oh, about. There you go. We wanted to make sure, guys. <laughs> we lost Cooley. All right, until he gets back on, hey, write this down real quick, guys. You guys are taken care of. So, um, Michelle, can you kind of break down what we're going to be doing on the on this call, like Q1 through Q4? Yeah, so so getting all the intro stuff out of the way, I'm going to highlight for you guys um, just a couple of bullets on, you know, what did change? Because to be honest, there's not a whole lot, right? What did change? Then we're going to go over the four, like, tactical, tangible things that everyone needs to work on. We're going to break down all four of those, the things you guys can leave with today. Um, we are also going to break down, okay, this is the, this is, this is the, this is the skill set, right? 
What exactly do I say? Okay. I pulled up. Look at this. I'm going to pull this up really quick. And this is, while you're pulling that up, guys, this is important now because I want you guys to understand that although a final ruling hasn't come down from this NAR thing, you're going to start getting those objections today, right? Now. You know what I mean? Before anything starts, before anything is finalized, people watch the news, they read things, and you're going to start dealing with this now, these objections in the living room, these objections with your buyers, with your sellers. So we want to make sure that you're prepared to have that conversation too yeah. right now. We're going to, you guys, I'm going to actually pull up scripts. I'm going to put it in the chat for everyone to leave with so you guys will have exactly what to do, what to say. Can you guys all see my screen? I just pulled up an image. Yes, ma'am. My good, I don't know if it's big enough, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, my, it. Abe, Abe Safa just posted this this morning. I was like, oh, that's perfect to show you guys because here's the deal. Yes, it will continue to pivot and change. No one has like perfect answers for you guys. Otherwise, other than someone needs to teach you what exactly to be saying to control these conversations now and to move forward and start building your business, right? And to be ready for as things come. This is what the consumer is seeing, okay? This is the miss information that your clients are all seeing on all the media platforms right now. Yep. Have you guys been seeing some of these? All over the place. All no. over. Yeah. So we have to prepare starting now, right? Even though there this technically nothing's changed in our business because it doesn't go into place until mid July. And even then the rulings aren't even final, right? So that's what we're preparing for. This is what they're seeing. Okay. Here's actually what changed that's giving the, that scarcity and fear, you know, around the agents is simply this. It's not that compensation is going away. It's not that buyer's compensation is going away. It's just simply no longer being advertised in the MLS between us as parties, right? Yep. That's it. It's still, we're going to yeah. talk about exactly why it's still business as normal, exactly how you communicate with your sellers, exactly how you communicate with your buyers, right? But I think that's where the scarcity and the fear is in. It's like, oh my gosh, it's no longer a 6% commission. That's not the case, Right. As the listing agent, Chris, you charge the service that you charge. It's just like the difference that there's agents out there right now that charge 1%. There's agents right now that charge 7 and 8% as a listing agent. Yeah. You take a portion of your commission to be able to provide the services and the work that you do with the cooperating broker, right? Business has not changed in any way, guys. And we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay? And, and when we get to the script port, like, guys, we need to understand that, like, everything she's saying is 100% true. But to even take it to, the like, the next level... What's going to happen here is there's going to be so many misguided sellers in the marketplace that are not going to sell their home in a timely, timely manner. They're not going to get the right price that they wanted for the home because they're going to be playing based off of these types of news articles and the agents that feed into that fear. While your agents are going to have the upper hand when they really get the right perspective of what they need to be doing in the marketplace. And we all know it's offering a commission because when you pay for the most, you get the most. And that's across the board. If it didn't work like that, then the flat fee companies and these companies who uh, reduce their fees down on every single transaction, they'd be the dominating force, but they're never the dominating force. So we can't allow that fear to get us. Yeah. For, for any of you guys who are in the mortgage industry, um, way back in the day, um, when the refinance boom happened, you started seeing billboards everywhere from like companies like Ditech.com, right? Uh, zero fees, 1.99% interest in the mortgage industry had a meltdown, right? Like, how are we going to compete? And so the, the same thing is kind of happening now, and we got to make sure that we're prepared. That's all. How many of you guys um, on this call work with me throughout the COVID thing? When we saw on the news that what was going on in China, I started preparing all of my listing agents to start doing Zoom virtual listing presentations and all of that stuff because we saw it coming. And I think some of you guys, John Patterson, thought thought I was crazy, um, but it's all about making sure that we're prepared. I know some of you guys made fun of me and going like, what's going on in China? That's not going to affect us. Boom, business <laughs> changes overnight, right? And so my agents had a leg up because they were prepared and they were just kind of doing what they were already doing. And we just got to make sure that you guys are in that position now that regardless of what happens while everybody else is trying to catch up, you've just been doing it, if that makes sense. Michelle? Yeah. And the second change, right, is simply that now we have to have a signed buyer's agreement, right? You're not going to get paid a commission if you don't have a signed buyer's agreement. You have to sign buyer's agreement as we're writing offers, as we're showing clients. Now, here's, here's again, going back to the analogy that most agents, this is how they've run their practice for years, right? Now we're just going to slightly pivot and adjust the compensation conversation because that's already how deals are being done, right? They've already been doing this. And you have to think about this um, just for, for those of you guys that are in like Washington, I think in certain, like the Northern parts of California, for those that we've been talking about this, cause we've been training on this since uh, early Q4, right? 
the laws already changed and put that piece in place uh, in January 1, right? There's already a growing percentage of transactions where this is all part of the process. And we told everyone else in the country, like, just be prepared. Everything we're training on now, it's the same thing that's coming to your market. And now look, now we become blanket, right? So those are the two tactical, like where it's like, what really changed and how big of a change is it? That's all it is, right? You won't be able to list the commission in the crow broker field. No, that doesn't mean that buyers are no longer getting paid. It doesn't mean commissions are no longer 6%, right? Things are going to evolve and change. Um, the consumer never saw that anyways. It's our job to educate and help lead these clients, the buyer side and the seller side, to get the result that they want because of all this and misinformation. Um, and again, like Chloe said, the great news is we've been training all this all along. We just make these little shifts and pivots and we build on the skill set. So let's dive in. I'm going to stop sharing screens. I'll put the scripting um, in a little bit. So Chris and Cooley, right? So I wanna start with point number one. So there's four things that all of you guys need to be working on and get really, really good at starting now. And some of you have been working on this for a long time, right? So number one, we have to get really good, right? At being, right? We have to become the buyer's agent, right? That has the value and has access to all the property. Right. So how do we in this? And this is the question for us. How do we separate ourselves apart tactically? Right. Because yeah. everyone out there is going to say, well, you need to show value. You need to show value. This isn't new. Right. This is not new for those that have been training with agents for a long time. This is nothing new. We're already training our agents how to be the value, how to win the appointment, how to win the presentation. Right. How to get the signature. OK, so we have to be the agent that has the value and has access to the properties. They're going to sign an agreement to be working with us. Absolutely. Right. It's the same exact as having a listing process. OK. So Chris Cooley, I don't know if one of you guys. So, want to so really quickly, when we talk about value, right, the question is, what's valuable to your actual clients? Not what you think is valuable, but what's actually valuable to them. Now, real quick, show of hands, show of voices, if you guys could just unmute your microphones and show me how many people on this call are used to getting their buyers to sign buyers agreements on their first appointment. Raise your voice if you're already doing that. Yeah. yeah. I've been well, hitting this. Yeah. 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 Okay, that, that's that's yes. my whole crew, right? Amber McDonald and her 78 page buyer's presentation. Stock went dramatically up on that. Um, but when we talk about value, right? And having to demonstrate our value, this is one of the hardest things for real estate agents to do. We just finished FISBO week last week and it's the most avoided demographic in real estate because it forces agents to actually display their value to a person who doesn't already see it, right? Now, what's valuable to your actual clients? Now, if I were to ask you really quickly, what, do you, what is your value proposition? When you're out there on a buyer's meeting, what do you tell them that's valuable? And you'll say some shit like, well, um, I have great customer service, I'm right? Nice. I have great service. I'm nice. Chris, I'm really nice. Is that standard? Yeah, that's standard. It's basic standard, stuff. Standard. Standard. That's the expectation for everybody. Nobody would meet with you if they knew there was a chance that you had really shitty service. So the question is, is it valuable to you or is it valuable to your client, right? Um, I'm going to help you find the home that you want, right? Not valuable to your client. What are some other things, guys, that we say that we think has immediate impact? You can always get a hold of me. I'm always, I'm always approachable, right? Always None of that available. stuff has any value. What's that, Michelle? Always available. I'm a great communicator. Right. I'm a great communicator. Okay. Like none of this, all of this is important. And yes, you, this should be a part of your presentation, but it's not what's valuable to your client. You've got to think about this. Guys, real quickly, how much do you want to charge as a buyer's agent? Raise your hand. Raise your voice. Just shout out a number. 3%. 3%. In your, in your marketplace, 3% typically equates to what? Show voices. 9,000. 20. 20, 20, 20, 20 yeah, Don't be shy, guys. Give it to me. I, I got to feed off of your energy, too. So if you're not shouting numbers at me, I'm going to I still have Toronto on here. All right. Perfect, right? So I want, you to ask, I want you to ask yourself right now, if somebody came to you, write down that number for me. If somebody came to you and said, you're going to pay me $15,000 because I'm a great communicator and I provide excellent service. Nope. Sorry. Because you're going to have to start to justify this now, right? And so we've got to start selling like the or not only our value, but the end result of that value. You know what I mean? Like 
what are they paying you $50,000 for or $15,000 for exactly? Raise your voice honestly if you feel comfortable articulating that right now. I can. I want you to be honest. I can negotiate the best contract for you. I can find your house, your perfect home. Find your perfect home. Now, would you hire a real estate agent? Hold on. I just want to touch on this because this is kind of what I'm talking about. And this isn't meant to discourage anybody because we're about to give you some tools so that you can use. But when you say, hey, I can find you the perfect home, like standard for a real estate agent, right? Standard for a buyer. No buyer is going to accept a real estate agent into their living room who's like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find you the perfect home, but we'll try. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's really standard, the things that we're talking about. And this is why there's such a need for sales skills and sales training. Um, Chris, what are your thoughts on that real quick? Well, Cooley, what we, need, what we need to identify very clearly for each one of us is what does unique mean for you? Because if your response is something that is not unique, then it's not unique, right? And so if I take 100 real estate agents, we can imagine that about 5 to 10% of those agents, 5 to 10 of those agents probably offer something unique that sets them apart. And that's why they're producing 25, 45, 65 plus transactions each and every single year. People are almost hunting those sure. people down because of those kinds of mm -hmm. results. So you got to go, if I continue to do what the 90% of agents do, I'm going to be getting what the 90% of agents are going to get. But until I do what the 10% of agents are going to do, I'm just going to keep on getting the same result, right? And so, like, that's where my mind goes to these things. You have, like, what, what Cooley's trying to pull out of you guys is what are you willing to do that nobody else is willing to do? If I take 100 agents and they have one buyer in front of all 100 and that buyer says, I'm looking for this, this, and this, and that's not even available, like, on the market or it's not seen or it's hard to find, how many of those agents are willing to go pound the doors down, get on the phones, get into their databases, do everything they can to find something off market? 90, 95% of agents are just going to look on the MLS. They're going to be lazy. Oh, I don't see anything. I'll, I'll keep track if anything comes on the market. But whenever it does happen, I'm going to give you great service. You know, like that's bullshit. Yeah, a, a thousand percent. So in terms of like, this is something that we train to do already. Raise your voice if you're a breakfast clubber on this call. If you are a breakfast clubber. Now, yeah. if I were to tell you, yeah. as like a breakfast clubber, right? If I were to tell you, like, I'm, say I'm just uh, an expired listing or something like that, and I were to tell you guys, hey, I really can't do anything because I, I can't find a property that I like. What is our value? Who feels like they can articulate that well? Nick Can't find the property that I want. Nick, Nick Tarani. Nick Tarani, I can't find the home that I want. Chad, I hear a lot of sellers in your exact same position where they can't find a home that they're looking for. And that's why I specialize in generating off-market opportunities for my buyers. That way they don't have to compete and they can get a good deal. Closing. So it's basically the solution, right? Um, and when we talk about that, what does that mean? What does that mean, off-market properties? Because when we're presenting with our buyers, man, we have access to so many tools, guys, so many resources that may be average to you but can be sold in a package to help deliver to your buyers exactly what they're looking for, which is somebody to actually do something and justify me paying you $15,000 commission, whether that comes from my own pocket or somebody else's, right? We'll talk about that later, right? But how great would it be if during the process of your buyer's presentation, you ask questions like, hey, Chris, how important is it for you to not only find the home of your dreams, but make sure that you walk away with great terms and at a price point that makes sense for you financially? That's what I'm really looking for. I'm looking to make an educated decision on the right property. 100%, Chris. And a lot of these on-market properties that we see, um, a lot of people compete to buy those houses. So they've got all of the negotiating power. Now, Chris, one of the great ways that we can not only find you exactly what you're looking for, Chris, but also put you in a position where you've got all the negotiating power so that you can control the price and the terms is we go out there and we actually have a database of off-market properties. Chris, do you know what an off-market property is? Yeah, I've kind of heard it, but I'm not really totally aware. Chris, I have an entire database full of off-market properties. These are people who want to sell, but have decided not to go on market yet. Now, Chris, if you think that we approach them with a great offer, great for you, with great terms, these are people that are willing to actually accept it. Not only that, Chris, I'm a technology company, and I have access to the email addresses, cell phone numbers, to everybody in a specific neighborhood. Chris, are there any neighborhoods that you want to specifically move to or take a look at? Yeah, I've really been looking at ABC. ABC, and ABC is a great neighborhood, and that's in high demand, Chris. I can actually generate the email addresses, cell phone numbers for everybody in that neighborhood. Go on the offensive, Chris, and find out who in that neighborhood is looking to sell 
That way we're the only offer that comes to the table. And Chris, do you know what happens when you're the only offer? I hope I'm hoping to get the best price. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about, Chris. So really quickly, guys, the, the value of, now, how many of you guys have access to expired listings? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we're not even, we're not even talking about you guys like having to like pay a bunch of money for resources. Right. But what are expired listings? What are, what are for sale by, or what are, what are expired listings? What are um, circle prospecting data? All of that data that you guys have, it's off market properties. Right. And so the value proposition that I've always leveraged for buyers that you should too, is not just sending them properties on the MLS, but actually putting them in a position where they see value in you, which is, hey, I've got access to all of the off-market properties, an entire database. This way, we can specifically target properties that aren't on the market, that you don't have to compete for. So that way, we walk into the transaction with all of the negotiating power, Chris. And in some cases, we could end up saving you 10, 15, even 20% on a property that you're more than in love with. And Chris, if I could do that, then obviously, that's something that you'd want in a buyer's agent, correct? Yeah, how do we get started? We're, we're looking, we're motivated. Exactly. And Chris already signed the contract two minutes ago. He just didn't know it. Um, <laughs> really quickly, how many of you guys actually see the benefit in being able to present that to your buyers? Yes or no? Big time. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's about yes. the confidence. It's about the authority. And, like the and, authority and, and that you with see your with buyers, is crazy. Go ahead, Chris. No, I'm just saying Sorry. like like you have to, guys, if most of the people on this live mastermind can get just 10, 15% of the confidence that Cooley just uh, exhumes, right? Like you're gonna be able to deliver it the right way. You have to be very confident. You have to be very authoritative. They're looking for somebody that could lead them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. This is uncharted territory in most cases, or they're only doing this every five, six, seven, eight years. They need you to feel very confident about what you could do for them. And it's not even really about like, the things that we're going to do that have to be that crazy. It's how you position the conversation to showcase the value. That's why it's a unique a value proposition, right? Other agents may have some of the same access to these kinds of tools, but they do not know how to present it the right way. They don't know how to present it. And you have to think about, you know, exactly why is someone going to work with you over everyone else, right? What are you willing to do that everyone else is not? And I'll tell you guys this, it's this, none of this is like magical. It's that you're willing to do the work. Right. We're going to get paid that 10,000, 15,000, 30,000 dollar commission because we're doing the work. It's, yeah. it's, it's proven to solve problems, it. too, because if, if you guys think, well, again, I hate to draw out all my breakfast clubbers on this call. Breakfast clubbers real quick. How many times have you competed for an expired listing or a for sale buyer who said something like, I don't know where to go next? OK, and you came in with actually solving the problem where most agents go, OK, well, I could send you some properties. Oh, well, I'll just go ahead and send you some properties on the MLS. Uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of months when you find something you like, right? That's your average real estate agent, right? Uh, and sorry if the impression wasn't spot on. But raise your, raise your voice, breakfast clubbers, if you're used to handling that objection and used to going above and beyond and selling your value. Honestly, will you guys just shout it out for me, please? Yep. You guys made me sweat for a second because I'm like, are you guys just too afraid to speak up or it what? It was only Sienna. Um, <laughs> so, um, so really quickly, guys, I want all of you guys to build that into your buyer's presentations today, right? Because this is what's going to come out when you're justifying like why they're paying you so much money. All right. And if you have to go back and listen to this recording, we'll send you some scripting on it as well. But this absolutely needs to go into your buyer's presentation, because with this alone, guys, they're going to find so much value in you because nobody else is going to present this at all. Not even as an option. People are going to send them properties and they're going to be like, cool story, bro. I'm not committed to you at all because you're obviously not commuting, committing to me. It's about what does your systems look like? What do your processes look like? And what is the value that you're bringing to the table? OK, raise your voice if you think that this is valuable and you're going to be implementing this today into your buyer's presentations. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. 100%. Yes. I'll, I'll okay. add, add one thing in that before we jump on to, to the second item is, you know, when you think about none of this is like, where am I spending money? Where is this like magical thing coming from? It's all resources that every agent has available to them. Just the majority will never use it, never know how to articulate it, right? And aren't going to, again, do the work. A couple more things in addition to that, okay? You guys got to think about this. In our group alone, we have almost 700 agents, right, collectively that are trained 
listing agents, some of the biggest listing agents in the marketplace, right? That are talking with multiple sellers every single day, people that are looking at coming on market, looking at selling their homes. Look at the 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 access that you have by being in type inside those ecosystems, right? We open all this up, invite people in. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are, right? You think about the ecosystem that Pro Agent is running, the, the umbrella of co-founders. You have this internal organization of people talking with hundreds of sellers a day, have properties coming on the market soon every day, investors selling properties every day. You got to get creative and look at the resources you have that other people don't, right? Let alone, I don't want to spend time on it here, but you think about what uh, uh, the EXP exclusives that was launched, right? Slight changes per market. We won't spend time on that here in this class, right? But this is, again, every off market to coming soon to active listing under an umbrella of 90,000 agents nationwide that you can pull up on an app to show your clients properties that are not even on the market yet. What could you do with tools like that that are free, that are built in, that already exist? Okay, so this is just to get you guys thinking like, well, what are, if I'm saying I have access to our properties or I articulate that with confidence and I can get that, I start sounding like Cooley just did when he rattled off that role play with Chris, right? Now, how do I go do it? It's all these, this list of short items that we just gave you guys. It's all already available to you, okay? And A we'll, thousand percent. We'll be doing and, and trainings that'll like cover that in depth, just FYI, but we just wanted to give you guys the, the tangibles and giving you guys enough takeaways to be like, oh, like I could start, I could start articulating this. I know where to go. This is something that you should build into your buyer's presentation. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a buyer's presentation, presentation, you need to get one now. All right. And this is something that you can actually show your clients, right? Now, how great would it be, Jonathan Martinez, if you could just open your computer and show them an entire database of off-market properties compared to what they've been looking at on Zillow? A lot of times that's enough to get people excited, right? This guy's actually going to go out there and work for me. He's showing me what he's got. He's not just talking, but he's demonstrating. And that's important too, Michelle. You can demonstrate your list of expireds and FISBOs. You can demonstrate the circle prospecting for the areas that they want. This is the work that you're going to do that differentiates you. So I'm going to try to keep us on track because we could probably go an hour on each one of these topics. So item number four, okay? So item number one of things you have to do is you have to get very clear on your value and why you have access to all the properties and why buyers are going to work with you, okay? Number two, Kuli just said it, you have to have a very strong buyer's presentation. Here's the deal. It's the same as having a listing presentation and getting a listing agreement signed. Again, this is what high level, the professional agents out there already been doing for years and years and years. There's no difference. They have a professional process and system. They have to compete for the business. They have to demonstrate and communicate their value. They agree to work with them for a fee. This is how real estate's been done for the history of real estate. It just only going back to what Cooley said, the market uh, has caught up to the, uh, everyone's complacency, right? It's because we didn't have to do it. The professional agents were already doing this. So if you don't already have a strong buyers and presentation, you have to get one. Um, it's so funny, Michelle, because I was talking to somebody about uh, Amber McDonald, who all of you guys may know. She She's an agent in our Washington market who does probably about 100 transactions a year by herself. And the majority of them, I think, or I think it's 50-50 now, but the majority of them used to be buyers. And she's got like a two-hour buyer's presentation. Yes, even in a hot market, she had a two-hour buyer presentation that was like 98 pages, right? And I would talk to people about how professional that was. And they, like, I would have, literally, I would have agents laugh at me and say, I don't have time for that. Or that sounds exhausting, right? But it's the people who, um, it's the people who treat this, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's <laughs> the people who, yeah, it's, they do 12 deals a year and they're scoffing at that. You know what I mean? But it's the people who approach this with a professional mindset, guys, uh, and a professional attitude and professionalize every part of their business um, that's really going to help them overcome this obstacle. And so a couple of questions that I want to ask you guys really quickly, as we're kind of going into this new era on the buyer side and maybe tweaking a few things on the listing side, I want you to ask yourself right now, who am I working with right now that's actually helping me put together my buyer's presentations? Who's actually helping me with the conversation and who's actually helping me implement all of these new things? Because it's important now more than ever, guys, that you're working with, and, and whether that's signing up for coaching uh, with like an organization like Mike Ferry, whether that's what, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, guys, but we've got to learn to get a lot more resourceful with who our partners are.
You know what I mean? That that goes for not only your um, your 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 coaching programs, your brokerages, your lender partners, your title company partners, right? It's like how can I pull up my resources now to professionalize my business and create systems in my business so that my partners are running with me and I'm not running by myself. If that makes sense, Michelle. Yeah. And uh, I want us to be able to spend enough time on the scripting, guys. Over these coming weeks, you're going to see us do a full, again, deep dive on how, we, even though we list them there for you guys, what are all the off-market strategies? How do we pull them? What do we do with them? And how do I articulate it, right? Full buyer's presentation, right? Templates, what can it look like? What should all of that look like? And then number three, okay, you got to, this is, this is to me the number one void, number one void across the industry, period doesn't matter what side of the business you're on, okay, is you've got to get really good at what to say, okay? This plays into uh, how to have the conversation. This plays into your negotiation skills. This plays into your presentation skills. You've got to get really good at what to say. And this is called skilling up. If you guys saw all the promotions we we're putting out there, it was all skill up, skill up, skill up. This is the game changer right here is number three. And so I want to spend, um, uh, I'm going to actually share screens. So Chris and Cooley, what we're going to give you guys, we wanted to give you enough to walk away with something tangible that'll help you guys in the conversations that you're working with this moment, right? You're, you're going you're gonna to spend some time working on and leveling up your buyer's presentation, all this kind of stuff. We want to give you guys stuff to handle the conversations right now, today, with all those headlines, with all the stuff that's going on. How do we control the conversation? All of this is super simple. So Chris Cooley, what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to share screens and pull up the script while you guys walk through it, if that's okay. Yeah. yeah that's and perfect. then yeah. I'll, I'll attach it in the chat here, guys. So all of you guys will have this in about five minutes and we'll be able to take it with you. So the give me one second here to share screens. And so while you're doing that, Michelle, I just want to talk to you guys really quickly about the importance of working on your skill set now more than ever. Now, most real estate agents, guys, we know are egotistical, right? You guys put your faces all over everything. You put your faces on uh, bus bench ads. Uh, golf courses, whatever. I mean, you guys are pretty fucking vain people. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that like I'm not, because I am too. I look at myself. Look at, look at his picture. Look at his picture on the thing. Yeah, right now. yeah look, at my, look at my picture. Like I'm, I'm the same guy. But what I do know is this, right? Is that ego costs us money on a daily basis. Why? Because we're afraid to practice in other with other people. We're afraid to fail in front of other people. And we're afraid to really put ourselves out there to get better. You know what I mean? And so I want you guys, if nothing else today, to take away that you guys need to practice and implement the conversation. How do I generate business? How do I have conversations with my buyers and sellers? And am I willing to put my ego aside so that I can grow while everybody else is trying to figure this out, right? You will win because you will be better than everybody else. You'll be able to articulate things differently and that's how you're gonna win, right? There are agents out there who do hundreds of deals a year and a lot of those guys aren't afraid to get on the phones and role play. They're not afraid to put themselves out there and you're, you're not looking incompetent. Believe it or not, people admire other people, especially successful agents who are putting themselves out there every day and fucking up and failing, right? And they inspire other people. So sometimes when you're practicing, your failure is inspiration to other people. They're like, oh wow, Reese is a really good agent. I really fucked that up. Uh, or they really fucked that up. But man, this is why they're getting so good. You know what I mean? Because they're making mistakes here, so they're not practicing on their clients. So I want to encourage all of you guys to get your egos out of the way. Stop acting like you, you know what you're doing here. Um, in terms of the conversation, especially when you know you need to get better. And I'm looking at several of you who I know right now who do need to put their egos aside and jump on some role play, some practice, some scripting and training and get out of your own way. Cooley, Michelle? Cooley real quick. Hey, yes. the, 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 quote of the, sells, the, the quote of the month for me, has as soon as I read it was, you have to be willing to be a foolish beginner before you can become a graceful master. Yeah. You know what I Amen. mean? And so, like, until you put, like, yesterday, Cooley and I and Michelle, you know, we're on a call for hours, and we're going over scripts, creating dialogues and stuff. We look like idiots, but we're just putting it out there, putting it out there, refining it, refining it, getting the skill down. What do we say? How do you say it? All that kind of stuff, right? And if that kind of shit doesn't excite you, you're probably not going to be obsessed, uh, obsessed enough about the business to really take this thing to the next level, right? You got to get obsessed 100%. about it. You got to be thinking about it. Just imagine anybody who wants to be the greatest at anything, they are insanely obsessed with it. And when these new problems come out, you go, man, I'm going to turn this problem into one of the greatest uh, you know, aspects of my business in terms of how I'm 
I'm able to serve the client. And you're only going to be able to serve the client when you know how to communicate to the client. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay, I'm going to share screens real quick. I just want to confirm everyone can see it. Hope, can you guys all see my screen? Yes. Yep. yep. Hopefully it's not. Is it too small or is everyone good? That looks fine. No, it looks so, good. Okay, so three yeah. things. Again, I'm going to attach this uh, in a moment into the chat for all of you guys. So you guys all leave with this in about five minutes. But I want to just quick role play and walk you guys through three things we're going to give you guys today. Okay. One, like how do I have that initial conversation? Like how do I differentiate myself? Uh, whether it's a referred buyer lead, an internet call, a sign call, a Zillow lead, whatever, right? Like how do I have that initial simple conversation uh, to, to, to bring enough value that they're going to actually meet with me over Zoom, in person, whatever, right? We're going to walk you through that by getting the, the compensation scripting to get the signature because all of us are navigating that right now with our clients, right? When we get to that point on the buyer's agency agreement, we're going to role play that with you real quick. And then also the seller. Right? How do we just navigate really simply that compensation conversation? So we're going to start right here. We'll start at the top. Um, and really, really quickly, guys, like this script is going to get like a thousand X better as we continue to grow it. Just FYI. So this is like, this is beta test in 101, but it yeah, works. And it's new, it's new territory, like Chris said, right? You, what do people like us doing? We're like, we need to help agents with what to do. We jump together right away and, for, and hashed all this out. So you guys have something you can walk away with. That's and, and I guess I should clarify, I guess I should clarify. So this is something that we already use with buyers, right? So for the agents who work with us, like we teach our buyers agents when they get a sign call, when they get a lead, right? It's like, we have to be the first to get out in front of them, right? And we've got to set the appointment because sending them just listings, like any agent can do that. We don't do that. We go out there and we protect our sheep. And I want you guys to think about how hard it is to generate leads. And when you get leads, right, then you have a choice to where you can gamble with those or you can get out in front of those people and be a good shepherd, right? And what does a good shepherd do? Guys, say it with me. What does a good shepherd do? What is a shepherd's job? Protect his sheep. 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 Right? And so this script is designed to get you actually out in front of your buyers so that you're actually having that conversation and they see more value in you than just a person who opens up doors, if that makes sense. So, hey, Chris, I can't read this on my screen. I could probably do it. No from problem. Memory, I'll ask but if you want to be the guy who reads it. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be the guy awesome. that reads it. So let's this say. top line, Chris, you do it and, and set the precedence of who you're talking to. Like you already kind of done the fluff and whatever. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, so let's say Cooley gave me a call on one of the properties that I have. I gave him all the information I, I uh, needed to give him based on the questions that he's, that he's given me. So Cooley, while I have access to the properties that everybody knows about, my real advantage is going to lie in the extensive off-market properties that my team and I have exclusive access to. And if I can find you the perfect home, negotiate the best possible terms, and possibly save you thousands of dollars by not having to compete, what would be the best time for us to get together to go over exactly what it is you're looking for? Today at five or at six is going to be better for you. Well, there we go. Well, Chris, uh, uh, that's all. Sound. Can you just send me a list of, of uh, like properties that you guys, you and your team have? Yeah, no, there's not really a list. There's all off-market properties that come from different sources that my team and I have access to. And I can go over these with you. Do you have time at this time or this time? Great. This time. Yeah, perfect. See you there. And so when you're doing that, guys, just make sure that you're articulating the value, right? And in a lot of cases, what I like to do is set it up with a question, right? Um, which is like, hey, hey, uh, hey, Jenny. How important is it for you to not only find the home that you're looking for, but find it at a great price and make sure that the terms and the conditions are, are awesome too? Like how important is that to you, right? And I want, I want them to say yes, right? That's also important. It's not just finding a home. It's also important that, yes, I find the home that I'm loving. I find it for a great price. I get a good deal on it and I get really good terms. Great, right? Now, are, Jenny, are you familiar with off-market properties? Who, who wants to be Jenny? Me, yeah, no, not really. No. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thanks, Chris. It's Jenny. Yeah, no, no, well, Chris, finding off-market properties could be the difference between you actually saving 10 or 15%, you being able to negotiate terms and concessions and getting the sellers to give you things to incentivize you to buy the property. And this is a real great way to win, Chris. And, and so if I can show you a way to not just show you the properties that are on the market, but also give you the opportunity to go out there and find exactly what you're looking for and get great terms with an off-market property, well, then it sounds to me like that's in line with your, what your goals are, right? Yeah, for sure. 
Great, Chris, before you make any decisions, let's get together tomorrow at six. We'll go over exactly what you're looking for in a new home, ways that we can target those specific properties in those specific areas. So that way we're taking advantage of both the off-market and on-market properties. Does tomorrow at six work or would seven be better for you? Yeah, I think seven is going to be perfect. Of course it is, because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a great home with great terms at a great price, right? Now, is there any skeptics out there? Because I like, there's nothing worse for me than having a bunch of people on a call listening to something and going, yeah, well, uh, that sounds good in theory, but you know what I mean? And I, if you're feeling any sort of way like that, I'd love for you to just unmute your microphone and just say, yeah, well, what about this? Mm -hmm. Any? Do we have any skeptics? Anybody who doesn't believe that we landed on the moon? Okay. Sienna Bowman Camp. Yeah, I'm but just fully, kidding, guys. But fully, I can't. Um, I, I, you know, you say it's so great and, and you kind of have this whole energy. I don't really have that energy. I don't, I don't know if it's going to come across the same for me. I don't know if it works. That's for a me. great question. That's a great question, Chris. And that's a common problem with a lot of real estate agents is, oh, you sound like you've been doing this for a long time. Man, I don't know if you guys notice this, but I stutter and stammer when I talk, right? Sometimes I use words out of context. I'm not the most. Um, I'm not the most articulate person that's ever lived, right? But what I am is I'm trained. And there's no such thing as good at prospecting or bad at prospecting. There's trained and there's untrained. I learned that from an awesome movie, Man on Fire, with Denzel Washington. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, see it. Um, but there's trained and there's untrained, right? And all we need to do, there's a lot of people on the Breakfast Club, guys, where we do our 7.30 a.m. Um, role playing and practice who sound a lot better than I do right? Because they're just smarter than I am, right? I'm not smarter than everybody else. But what I do is I practice every single day to make sure that I'm able to articulate these ideas with confidence. Your clients will mirror you, right? So if you're articulating this, right, and you're stuttering and stammering, and you don't know your value, your client is going to mirror that insecurity and go, mm, man, I really don't know if I should be like meeting with this person. Maybe this person doesn't have the value. That doesn't sound that great. So the importance of actually practicing this every single day, guys, will be the difference in between you getting appointments or not. They Chris, need to fill. They need Michelle. to fill it in their. They need to fill it in their gut. And you know, my if if anybody was going to say, hey, because somebody will tell me, hey, Chris, man, you sound so good when you say that. I don't, you know, the kind of the same thing I gave you, right? Well. If 20 P if, let's say if an agent or I'm sorry, a buyer called 20 agents on 20 different properties, how many people are using this script that they're talking to zero. And if you're the only one actually playing the game the right way, it doesn't matter if you're doing it at a C level, B level, or an A level, you're going to have a greater chance than all the other guys that are trying to play the game and don't even have the playbook. Yeah. And the hotter the market gets, the more this works, right? The more you have testimonials and experience from the market being crazy, the more this works. Hey, Chris, what we're finding right now is your average home is getting about 25 offers. This means the sellers are totally in control, being able to demand whatever it is that they want from you, and you end up overpaying on a property. Now, Chris, if I could put you in a position where you don't have to compete with 30 other people to buy it, you can get the property that you love for a deal, then it sounds to me like that's in line with what you guys want, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. And how okay, about, hey- so like. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, hey, do you want to be on the? Do you want to be at the mercy of the market or at the mercy of a powerful agent like myself that can find the deal, find the deal that makes sense, and get you in there in the next thirty days? Mm. There you go. Amen. So good, guys. I'm going to keep us moving Question. to be on track. Question. Bro go ahead. Sorry. Um, what about for those agents that? Um, what about like if you're listing the property and the the homeowner is only paying you a commission? And now, ooh, I love that. Yes, we're going to get right into that, Brittany. Like, okay, are you okay. talking about like? Sorry, I interrupted you because I got excited. <laughs> I tend to do that. Go ahead, finish your question. Well, no, I was just, I was going to say like, and you have someone that's coming to you that's unrepresented and now you got to have a conversation with the seller or like, how does that look? Like, what does that look like? Are you having a conversation with the seller as of, hey, I'm about to represent both, you know, both parties and I need, you know, my other 3% or are you going to look for the buyer to give that? Like, you my know, my question would be, what is your standard for a seller? Because how I'm going to preach to the agents and pro agent is like, it's still 6% or more. Right. And so yeah. if we're working with sellers and, and Cooley may have a different response to this and I want to hear what he says, but if you're working with sellers, like 
If you already know, if you took all the listings on the market right now and you took, let's say, 50% of those properties removed a buyer's agent commission, which ones are still going to be on the market in 30 days? The ones that offered commissions or the ones that didn't? Who's going to make more money and who's going to make less money? And so I really think it starts off with your listing presentation. And if you're not getting your people to buy in to paying the buyer's agent or paying you the full six or whatever you think you're valued at, right, then you're going to have to deal with the issues of having people with lower standards or you're, you're taking on clients with a lower standard than you need to, I think. Yeah, I think to answer your question, Brittany, your commission is 6%, right? If you're a listing agent, your commission is 6%. And you could be apologetic about that, right? Or try to make a deal. Or you could just have that astronomical value proposition and the confidence to demand exactly what you worked hard to do, right? Um, so we're going to talk about how to have that conversation with your listings, right? Because what you're going to get more and more, and I don't know if it's the next one up, Michelle, yeah, but what you're going to get more and more as you walk into the living room for your listing appointments, guys, is they're going to say, hey, I heard on the news that I don't have to pay a buyer's commission anymore. Why, why am I paying like 3% for a buyer, right? Um, so and we want you equipped to deal with that too. Raise your voice if you've already gotten some of that stuff already, guys, either on the buyer yep. side or the yep. listing side. On Just the raise listing your voice side, already. Okay. Cool, All right. So, so I'm going to, we'll go back to the buyer's conversation. So, cause we have all three for you guys. Okay. So that initial that's what we already trained on, right? How to set value as a buyer's agent. I hope you guys, you guys are all going to get this recording, right? I hope you're fast forwarding it to like 40 minutes in. It's again, there's trained and untrained. This is what you practice. You guys can pause it, rewind. That was gold, what Cooley and Chris were doing back and forth. So now it's, let's navigate this conversation that you said, Brittany. Okay. So now we're having this, the compensation conversation with the seller. Cooley, can you see the screen? Chris, can you see the screen? Yes. I yep. I can't see it, but Chris can read it. Let me, um, let me actually make it a little bigger just for you guys. So, so really quickly, understand, guys, that on the listing side, it's business as usual, okay? It's business as usual. Uh, if you're in the co-founders group, you're used to going out there and charging your 6% commission, right? Guys, raise your voices. Yep. Like, we train you to do that. Yep. And so for you guys, I think that's why a lot of you guys aren't panicking right now because you guys know how to go out there and get your commission, right? But the question really comes and the change comes is when you start getting pushback from your sellers going, wait a minute, why am I paying a 3% buyer's commission? Why am I having to pay yeah. this? I heard on the news that we don't have to pay buyers anymore. And you've so got to be 100% confident and prepared to handle that. Because again, you want to create insecurity in your clients be insecure about what you're saying, right? Start talking about all of the new laws and the nuances and just start creating objections for yourself or you keep it very simple and you keep it moving forward like you always do. Yeah. yeah. And before so I read Chris, it. I want, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris, I want, I'm, I'm, so it's business as normal, guys. Here's again, nothing's even changed. Okay. And, and this will establish that. So Chris does his normal listing process, normal listing presentation, establishes his value. I'm agreeing that I want to work with him, right? Now, here we come to the part talking about, you know, compensation. We're signing the contract, All right? right? So, so I'm going to so, say. Hey, Chris, like, I don't, I heard on the news that I don't have to pay a buyer's commission anymore. So, like, I don't get why I would have to pay that. And other agents are telling me that we don't have to pay a buyer's commission. I can appreciate that. And, you know, what the new law did was change the way we disclose exactly what our options have always been. We still have the option to offer whatever commission we feel will bring us the strongest return. You know, Cooley, my commission is 6%. And one of the reasons I've chosen to offer half of my commission, which is 3%, to the market is I found it's what creates the incentive for all of the other agents to utilize their resources and bring all of their qualified buyers to the table to net you the most amount of money. And that's what your ultimate goal is here, right? That you walk away with the most money possible, correct? You guys, you guys remember the movie, The Lion King, when the little, little, what do they call them? What are those little dog-like creatures? What are we, hyenas? Mm -hmm. They were saying the Hyenas. name Mufasa. They were saying the name Mufasa, woo, and they were getting really excited just about the name. And that's what I, that's what I feel when I hear this, okay? Why? Because it's not complicated, right? Why? Because it puts you back in the driver's seat and we get you right back on what, soccer players? You know what I, What are we getting them back goal. to? Goal, well, We're getting them back goal. to the goal, right? And that's ultimately what it is. It's like, what is the benefit um, of me paying this buyer's commission, right? Is this new? Do I not have to pay? And you notice what Chris said, right? Chris said that my commission is 6%, right? And one of the reasons why I always offer 3% to the, to the market is because I found that that's what incentivizes all of the buyer's agents out there to bring their buyers to the table so that we've got a lot more negotiating power and we could demand a lot 
put more money. And at the end of the day, Chris, that's your goal, right? To make sure that you're getting the most offers and demanding the most money possible. Exactly. Yeah, great sign. Exactly. Hey, guys, this is what most agents, I think, are going to do when this, when this comes up. They're going to try to make the seller wrong. And you're never going to yes. win when you make the seller wrong. And what I mean by the seller wrong is everybody on this call, for the most part, and I know some, some agents don't know this, the seller has never been paying the buyer's commission. It's the listing agent who is paying the buyer's agent's commission. But if I say, no, you're wrong, I'm paying that commission, and you don't really present it properly, then they don't get to gain the perspective that you would like them to gain from this conversation. You know what I'm saying? And so if we make them wrong, you're never going to be right. I will be wrong nonstop in order for us to win. You can either be wrong, you can be right, or you can win. But I tell you what, you, you can't get both. Yeah, exactly. And so if you're starting off statements by going, well, that's not actually what happened, right? Or that's not true. You know what I mean? All you're going to go, all you're going to do is like make people more steadfast to investigate, right? And all you could do, all you need to do is just really clarify, right? Chris, what the new law state is that we disclose what's always been true, what your options have always been. You know what I mean? Mm. So nothing changes. And so that's, that's again, the mastery behind actually selling is like you could choose to go into the laws. You could tell them that they're not right. You could, you know, decide to try to pivot or create more value, or you can just go, yeah, yeah, there have been some changes. And what those new changes are is X, Y, and Z, right? And then you, you switch them back to talking about why they're doing this in the first place, which is the goal. You know what I mean? What's in it for them? Why are they doing that? Why is it partly their decision too? Why are we both? And I want you guys to pay attention to the language. It says we, right? We have always had the option. You guys notice why it says we? Because we're making a choice together, right? You've already basically chosen me to represent you. We're going over terms now, right? These, these have always been, this has always been our options to offer whatever commission we want to offer to incentivize bringing buyers agents in, making them leverage their resources to get excited about bringing buyers to this home. We're either going to incentivize the competition, we're going to incentivize the market to bring those buyers to the competition, or we're going to incentivize the market to bring those buyers to us so that we can negotiate this deal strong and so that you walk away with the most amount of money. And really, Andy, that's the whole reason why you're listing your property, right? To get the most amount of money possible. Amen. Yeah, cool. Okay. You know, cool. That makes sense. But there's going to be other people in my neighborhood that are not going to do that. And they're going to, it seems like they're going to be able to save $10,000 on, on this deal. And we want to save all the money that we can. So like, th that's my problem. Well, Chris, what's more important to you at the end of the day? Is it the commission that you end up paying? Or is it the money that you walk away with at the end of the sale? Well, both, but I, yeah, I guess if I can walk away with more money and I pay the commission, it makes sense. Yeah, Chris. So it's not about saving commission. What you really want to do is just make sure that you bring as many buyers to the table so that you've got all of the negotiating power so that you could demand what you really want, which is the most amount of money possible. Chris, would you gladly pay a 10% commission if it meant you met, netted 20% more? Oh yeah, for sure I would. And that's exactly what we're talking about here, Chris, is how to put you in the best position possible to net the most amount of money. So Chris, go ahead and sign here, please. Yes, sir. Real quick, because I got to keep us moving here. Who's getting value out of this? I am definitely. All of Andy Holmstrom, uh, you don't look like you're happy, but I'm going to win you. Like I, I promise. Like, are y'all ready for the objection? Like, now you should be like, oh, I've been, I've been, I'm waiting for you to give me that objection. I'm waiting for yeah. it. I'm waiting for But, guys, I'll tell you this. If I sit in front of somebody at, at the listing, you know, at, at, at a listing's property or a seller's property, your presentation should be so good that even though there's all this craziness happening in the marketplace or craziness on the headlines and on the news, that they don't even bring the objection. Could you make it to where you get so good at your presentation that it makes so much sense for them to work with you regardless of the commission that they just sign the contract? However, you work on this dialogue and this script so much that when they actually bring it up or if they do bring it up, you're like, I've been waiting for this. And that's what you're thinking about in your mind. I've been waiting for somebody to give me that, right? And um, if, the more prepared you are to give this kind of a response and have it down pat, Man, it's going to be a game changer. And that helps you prospect more because it, yeah. know, it it gives you this ability to know that you have a high conversion level at the appointment. And how much better would you prospect if you know you could get seven, eight, nine out of 10 listing, uh, listings to sign with you, right? You're going to go crazy. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to shift us here just for time's sake, right? Uh, I'm.
we're going to shift us now to the buyer's conversation, right? Getting the buyer agency around that compensation. Let me make this a little cleaner on the screen here. You guys can see this okay? Yes, ma'am. I dropped it again. I had a couple of people ask for it. So let's run through this conversation. So Chris, you've already done a powerful a presentation to somebody, right? Now we've got to sign the buyer's agency agreement. Perfect. We've got to go all those tacticalities. Hey, can, can I just say something really funny to you guys real quick? Um, so we put together this script and then Chris was like, well, let's see if we can clean it up using chat GTP, right? He put it into chat GTP and it spits out exactly what we gave them, right? Which means that chat GTP is like, oh my gosh, I'm inferior, mm -hmm. right? So it just made me laugh how they couldn't think of a better way to articulate it than us. And I just want to see, hilarious? it was hilarious. And I just want to see what your browser looks like when you're on chatpp.com, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this thing done. Yeah, so guys, you know, we're at that position in the conversation where it's like, you know, if you were meeting with the seller and that seller's coming and they're saying, well, we got to think about it or we got to do this, we got to do that. We're typically going to go, hey, you know what? There's three really important questions yeah, that we need to ask buyer, at this point. The buyer. We're talking, we're meeting yes, the buyer. exactly. Know what you meant. Exactly. Yeah. So now we're now we have to make sure that we have this process for a buyer. Right. And so, hey, I want to go over some questions. Right. They're going to make the most out of the rest of our time here. Number one, Cooley, do you absolutely want to purchase the property within the next whatever amount of days? Yeah, 100%. Perfect. Now, Cooley, are you committed to buying a property within that price point and that criteria that we've been discussing? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, have you decided that I can make this happen for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident that you can. Well, thank you, man. I'm very excited to get to work for you. You know, due to the recent industry changes regarding how we disclose compensation, I do need to clarify how I am compensated. And, you know, the most common scenario is that a seller will compensate me for bringing a willing and able qualified buyer where I can negotiate on your behalf, and this occurs in the largest percentage of cases. Or number two, in some instances, the seller may not compensate me for negotiating on your behalf. So just so we're clear, compensation has always functioned this way. We just have to disclose it a little bit differently now. So if the seller tries to discourage you from having representation, we can be creative on how we can cover my compensation. And this assures that number one, you are not unrepresented. And number two, you're going to secure the home that you desire with the best possible terms for you. And that's what you and the, your family are looking for. Right, Cooley? A hundred percent. Perfect. Let's go ahead and sign the contract. Can you, can you guys identify any language in those contracts that's, that's really important? This is always how it's been. Yeah, who if they won't compensate you, me, we'll figure out another way, i.e. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What else? And, and I, want, I want you guys to start thinking about this in terms of like what it actually is when a seller's offering 0% commission, right? And I don't want you to make your buyers unaware of what's happening. And basically when they're offering 0% commission, what they're really doing is – disincentive or, or incentivizing you not being represented, right? They're trying to disincentivize your buyers from being represented. You know what I mean? And so you've got to make sure that you're able to have that conversation too, right? Now, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who will try to discourage uh, representation, you know, and put you in a position where you're not represented and you're, you know, having to deal all the negotiating yourself, right? And this is a real problem because Anytime you're in a position where you're going unrepresented, you know, you could actually end up paying a lot more for the property than you would have. They're negotiating terms. Sometimes they they hide things within deals. And I'm just talking to you guys about this. I'm not talking about scripting, right? Um, but they're representing the seller, right? And so don't let the market discourage your buyers from being represented. You know what I mean? It's And make, make sure that you articulate that, if they're not paying a commission, then what they're really trying to do is disincentivize you being represented. And this is what if happened in the night, guys, when there was dual agency, right? A lot of people on here don't even know about it. This is why the game changed in the 90s, because buyers were feeling like they weren't getting the proper uh, representation. And yeah. that really screwed a lot of things up. And then it changed. And then now, you know, post-2008, when the market was going on, then it was like big on, okay, well, I got to have my agent, my representation, and all that kind of stuff. And you know, this is just kind of resettling a lot of those facts, you know? 100%. 100%. It's like, do you want the home of your dreams or do you want the home of your dreams to turn into a nightmare for you like it has for some people, right? And typically that tends to happen when 
you know, they, they purchase a for sale by owner or when they go unrepresented when they're purchasing their home, right? Chris, the last thing that you would want to have happen is to go unrepresented, right? And have all of the terms and conditions and price placed upon you and find yourself in a position um, where you're not happy with the home that you just bought, right? No, for sure. For sure not. A hundred percent. Hey, would you go to, so, would, would you get a divorce and let your wife have an attorney and you not have an attorney? Right. Exactly. If you were, if you were in a divorce scenario, would you just, um, go unrepresented and have conversations with your, with your wife's attorney and your wife without an attorney present? No, that'd be crazy. You know what I mean? How about if the you're buying a business? Kind of true here. How about if you're buying a bit? Hey, I'm going to yeah. go buy a subway. I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go buy that. And they have representation and you don't, how's that going to work? Yeah. You know, it works. For so this is just life. mindset, mindset for you guys, right? Because I think a lot of agents do struggle with knowing their own value. And you've got to understand that you're a big piece of the transaction, guys. And it's and 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 you earn your money. And if you feel like you earn your money, right, and you have a reason to be there other than just unlocking a door box, you know what I mean? Then you'll start walk, talk and acting like you've got something of value. You know what I mean? But you've got to be able to articulate that and be a leader of a transaction. Yeah. Michelle. And yeah. Yeah. So I know some people like fell off, came back on. I attached it again, guys. This is just, if this is uh, those of you that train with us and are in our, uh, uh, our community know the drill that we work on every day, right? For a lot of you guys that are guests, um, uh, I want to be able to address a couple of different ways that agents can get the training at this level. Um, but just to recap really quick here that everyone has this written down um, and then we'll do a little bit of Q and A and then I know we'll have to, to, to end here. But again, the four things that you guys have to get strong at and need to be working on every day starting right now. Again, number one, how you're becoming that value as the buyer's agent, okay? Why they're gonna work with you. Number two, having a strong buyer's presentation. Number three, gotta get really, really good at what to say. What we just worked on for 30 minutes straight here, okay? That takes practice, that takes training. And number four, become a strong and dominant listing agent in your marketplace. You wanna solve all of your production problems, you want to future proof your business, period, you become a strong listing agent, period, end of story. Okay. So I'm going to a uh, couple of questions here, Cooley and Chris, and then we'll do some Q and A. And then I know we're kind of, uh, we're going to be about out of time here. Um, number one, we've got obviously a large pool of agents on here. We've got lenders on here uh, with the need that's in our industry right now. Uh, how Cooley, how can how can lenders work? How can lenders help their agents work with us in different ways? That that's a great question, Michelle. And I think there there are quite a few lenders on this call. Um, you know, when I was talking earlier about making sure that your partners, guys, are actually that, like the vendors in your business or partners in your business, um, we're working on some really creative ways that we can work with your guys' lenders them into your business to make sure that they're providing the value that you guys need to keep your business going from a lead generation standpoint, right? From a system standpoint, because what good is a partner if they're not providing you value, right? So we're running some coaching right now with some lenders. And if you guys want your lenders to be a part of that right now, um, go ahead and have them DM Michelle and Michelle will talk to them about how they can get signed up for that. But again, like who are your partners? What value are they adding to you? And if they're not adding value, well, then they're not a partner, right? Would you guys all agree with me on that? Without a doubt. Okay. And then, a thousand percent. And, yep. and then when we yeah. talk about, you know, how to become a, a strong listing agent for those that already collaborate within this ecosystem, what's trained on every day. It's why we have the dominant listing agents across the marketplace. We have, uh, again, ran the largest listing brokerages in all of our marketplaces, uh, let alone the ecosystems we run now. What are ways agents can get resources, start to train, start to build that skill set necessary. Say that again, Michelle. Sorry, you were breaking up for me. I apologize. Oh. So, so wanting, how can agents uh, that are looking to get stronger at their presentations, get stronger at being able to be, become a listing agent, get stronger at their skills? How are ways agents? Yeah, well, th this is, this is something that we do every single day, guys. And this is an integral part of what the co-founders group ecosystem is. So if you're in a position where you feel like you can't pick up the phone and create a listing when you want a listing, uh, DM Michelle or myself, and we'll talk to you about how you can actually get all of those resources at no cost. You definitely have options to work outside of our group, guys, but we want to make sure that you know that there's a resource in us 
And the only thing that Michelle, myself, Chris Hardy do all day long is work with our agents on teaching them how to take control of their business, right? And control is what takes 99.9% .9 of the problems out of the industry. Question I want to ask all of you guys right now, if the market shifts any further, do I have the ability to create business when I want business, right? Do I have the systems to create more business based off that? And would I be in a better position now if I had more control over my business? Chris, Michelle? Yes, 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 yep. yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. So All right. I, so really quickly, do we have any do we have any questions, Michelle? Do we want to open it up for yeah, some do, brief Q and A? We'll do about five, five minutes, five ten minutes, minutes of of Q and A. Anybody have and, any questions? And just real quick, guys, I just put in the chat just for anyone that is a stranger to us or doesn't already, um, uh, just to, where you guys can follow us easily on social media. We are constantly, all three of us, myself, Cooley, and Chris, we are constantly putting out sales training content for you guys, and we run open uh, events things like this that you guys can jump on. I'm hoping you guys are taking away, walking away today with value that you can go implement in your business. Everything we do will always be tactical, will always be sales training and sales systems that you can turn around and will help you do more deals that same day, okay? And so if you guys follow us, we're constantly putting content out daily, things you guys can have access to. So I just want to emphasize that. So yeah, let's do five minutes of uh, questions and then we'll wrap up and wrap up the recording. So who's got questions? Right. Yes, who said I have a question? That's you. Yeah. So, yes, go ahead. When you guys were talking about the listings and everybody's still asking for that 6% so they can share it with the buyer broker, um, with the law changes, I am expecting form changes as well. And I expect for that field to be taken off there as since we can't offer it in the MLS more, I don't see a reason why they would keep it on the form. How do we get that commitment from the seller in writing if that's not an option anymore? So, I mean, I'll answer. Great question. I'll, great question. Great question. If you looked at it from our scripting, they're paying you the commission, right? How it's going to be broken uh -huh. out outside of that, that'll be different. So documentation with your seller, right, contract-wise, it's going to be the 6% to you, the 7% to you, the 5%, whatever, whatever it is, right? Does that make sense? Now, yeah. what I will say, those of you, I, I dropped the recording earlier. Um, they gave some really tactical stuff, uh, a kind of broad stroke nationwide on like, here's then how you would incorporate <clears throat> and to write it into the deal, right? Uh, of how it's going to be the commit your commission, how you want to disperse and what you want to do with it. That's on you and how it's written into the deal. So there's really great verbiage on that. And I guess if you remember, this isn't even being enforced yet until July, just the conversations are happening now. And it also could change. And this is the entire industry. And so you guys need to be up to date uh, with us, our broker team every week from whether the form changes, the realtor changes, the MLS changes, how that wording is going to happen. That's the entire industry as, as we speak is evolving. We'll come with exactly how you want to do it. And you're going to be, that's just that you're going to be updated on every week as this process unfolds. Does that make sense? But that's a, in that recording, they covered, they covered that question, um, and I'll, I'll uh, for anyone that doesn't see it, I'll redrop that recording. It'll just help answer that for everyone. Are you talking? Are you talking about the one with um, Annie Fitzsimmons? No, this wasn't the Annie Fitzsimmons earlier. one, which they probably toot. I know Annie Fitzsimmons. I wasn't on that one. Was probably really good. This was the. Uh, this was like leadership across the industry. I, I'm dropping it here real quick. I think how they handled that one was it was through seller concessions. So the seller would offer concessions towards the buyer's um, closing costs that would cover the commissions. But that's actually my question too. So if that's the case, then let's say your, your buyer is maxed out on the amount of seller concessions that the seller can contribute. Because I had, a, I had a, a buyer like that as well, who just maxed out at 4%. And so the seller was offering more of the commissions are not more of the commissions, but more of the closing costs towards their concessions, but were maxed out at just 4% and instead of the 6%, that was just their policy. So there was like a $4,000 difference. So if we're getting our commissions through the concessions of the seller and it's going towards the buyer's closing costs, then how is that going to affect the buyer and the closing costs that they would get to help with their prepaids and other fees? I don't know why, guys, but I think that's not even going to happen. But I'll let you guys answer it. I just don't think. Hey, I got I got something to chime in. And I know we got some lenders on the call. I feel like there's going to be some FHA, uh, you know, guidelines, Fannie Mae guidelines that are going to be changing here in the next future about how much credits can be given. Okay. I would imagine. I think VA is going to have a real hard time. 
But uh, the value proposition and all that stuff that you guys uh, shared with us today, this has been fabulous stuff. I'm just wondering how to handle the buyer um, paying a commission. And, and, and part of that, Donna, where you look at what everyone brought was talking about between yesterday to yeah. yeah, we have to understand that as an industry, that's all you guys, everyone's going to get paid, right? So it's just going to shift and pivot and find the best way to do it. To do it. it it's not right. going to be perfect today. Right, it's not gonna be perfect July, but we are gonna put in the footwork so that by the time it's enforced, we know exactly how to write all this stuff in. Actually, it's like, perfect like today, perfect. and they're screwing it up. Actually, it's perfect today, yeah. and they're screwing yeah. this shit up, and it's exactly. and it's ridiculous. <laughs> and and really, you know, anybody, because guys, I'm I am not a educated person. I'm a I dropped out of high school like in ninth grade. You know, I am not supposed to even be in the position that I'm in. And even me, in my brain, I could look at all this and go, "There's no reason for any of this stuff to really be happening that's going to benefit anybody at any level." But I, I want to bring it back to this real quick. And I posted a link to a YouTube video I, I dropped. It's a meeting that we did for Pro Agent yesterday. And please go on there, watch that video. You may agree with what I'm talking about. You may disagree. But I think the deal really comes down to what is the market like? If this would have happened th uh, three years ago, four years ago, I think it would have had a bigger negative consequence because anything would have sold. Anybody was going to buy anything, right? And so, but what's happening now is in most markets, there's three to six months of inventory. And when there's always uh, more supply than demand, the sellers need as many agents to go out there in the marketplace and find a qualified buyer. And there's nothing changes in, in regards, I believe, in regards of uh, an agent being able to go out there and say, hey, I want this commission and I'm going to give half of this commission or whatever I want out of this commission for a buyer's agent to bring their best buyer in. None of it, none of that stuff has to change whatsoever. So like, that's why I think a lot of the concession, and again, I could be wrong, but a lot of this stuff about like seller concessions and all that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that's really going to play in the in the long run because it's going to hurt a lot of buyers. It's going to kill lenders. It's going to kill sell. It's going to hurt sellers the most because sellers aren't going to get the best offer. Hey, you know the real million dollar question here is: um, Are you married to the idea of not paying a commission, or in reality, are you guys just looking to net the most money? You know what I mean? And like, and and, at, and if somebody can see very clearly that the market, like the market, the agents don't even have to be good for that to showcase because we know if I if I go in anybody's market and I take properties that have been offering 1% commission versus the ones that have been offering 3% commission, which ones sell? Which ones sell faster? Which ones sell for the most money? It works like that. You know, we sell hundreds of expired listings each and every single year. Most of these sellers had one thing in common. They listed with an agent who did it for less or did it for almost nothing. And then they got the same result. And then we got to come in there, charge a premium and deliver a premium service. And I think the market is going to see that. They've always had the choice to decide on what agent they want. But if, if we were in this one month supply market, it could get a little bit weird. And listing agents could capitalize and really they don't maybe have to pay a commission. But outside of it being that, you're going to be typically in a three, four, five, six, seven, eight months of inventory in a marketplace. And they're going to need you um, more than anything. Michelle? Yes. This is Rick. Hey, um, I don't know how many other agents on here have been in the business so long that I actually, when I got my first commissions, I was paid as a sub agent. And that was before there was a buyer, this whole buyer brokerage thing even existed. So just to let you know, when we went from sub agent to buyer brokerage and everybody had the same freak out about this at that time, nothing changed. The reality is, we're going to probably have a year or so where we figure out what we're saying to our clients and how we're describing things. And, and uh, there's going to be a couple more disclosures. I'm sure we'll kill a few more trees than we need to, or digital yeah. trees, but it's, it's ultimately we're going to get paid to do what we do. If we actually bring the value, which is what we're, what Chad was mentioning earlier. If you bring the value to your client and they see it and you're a professional and you know how to control the process, this won't be a problem for you. Yeah. In fact, Amen. get rid of Amen. a lot of dead wood that we need to get rid of. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bur burn them up, so baby. Throwing burn out, them up. Throwing out dead wood. I love it. All right, Michelle, so, go ahead. I was just going to say, I know we got to wrap here. I want to, uh, I don't know, do we have room for one more? Do we have one more question? Otherwise, we do got to wrap, guys, um, just for timing-wise. Um, anyone else? I'm really hungry, there? Michelle. So what I want to say real quick, you guys, thank you real quick, Coach Cooley, Chris, how, can you guys give a round of applause? Like, thank you. This content was so amazing. Oh, I, yes. thank I you. know. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so much. I know the is on this. I know they're not. Because I know what people are being trained on. I have the feedback from the lenders and the agents out there every single day, all day long, right now. 
So they all, I showed you guys where it'll fall along with. Yeah. Now, just please reach out if you guys want to be kept in tune of what's going on. The, hitting on those four points of what you guys got to work on. We're going to do a deep dive on each one of those. Okay. All on these come so just stay tuned. Uh, uh, we're going to equip you guys. We're going to make you prepared and we're just going to make you guys bigger badass okay. than you are. Okay. Powerful Chris Hardy, powerful Michelle Wilson. Thank you guys so much for showing up. It's time to show up and grow up each and every single day to my co-founders. I will see you on the Breakfast Club at 7.30 tomorrow because now you're seeing the difference between trained and untrained. Let's go. Have a great day, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Let's go. Woo-woo.